Alrighty. So, uh, got, got a bunch, bunch of new stuff, stuff we're going to work on today. today. And I'm fiddling, fiddling around, around with Discord. Discord. So, so, if you want to join Discord, Discord, I'm posting a link to Twitter. If you, you want to join that, that you, you can chat to me via the Discord and with the group of people in Discord that aren't in the Twitch chat. All right. Let's I completely there we go. Okay, go back. You do not like this tune. I do not like that tune either. Yeah, okay, this one's this one's fun. Yeah, all right. So, um what I'm going after today Let's start, start up our notes, notes like my, my new habit, habit dictates. Um, oh yeah, that's, that's that's some cool stuff from the Visual, Visual Studio Code, Code team. Visual, Visual Studio Code's getting, getting a lot faster. faster. So, so today, however, is not October 9th. It is October 11th. Uh, happy birthday shout out to my brother Adam down in Boca Raton, Florida. Probably screwed around like always. Um, it is 15.05 p.m. And we're, we're not, not talking, talking about Terraform right now. We are going to be working on some Go, and specifically uh, composite types. Um, oops, I can't spell that. So we're going to look at slices, arrays, and some other things, and then look back at uh, the code repo for Culligary, and uh, basically take a look at what we can do to refactor the repo, because it was in a state of kind of eh, <laughs> whenever we left it last time. Uh, and also, I want to make a note, and let's hear, uh, a shout out to, let's see if I go here, and then look at notifications. Um, I got pinged by Florin Patan, DL Sniper. Um, it's got a nice little F-22 picture. He works at um, JetBrains, and I don't follow him. I should, because he's often tweeting a bunch of badass stuff about IntelliJ, GoLand, as you can see here, and a bunch of other stuff. So if you want to keep up with uh, the IDEs from JetBrains, this individual is a very good person to follow. Um, and also, will go to bat to figure out things if you're having some trouble, answer your questions, those types of things. It's pretty active. So... Go, go give DL Sniper, Sniper a follow, um, and you know, interact, interact and stuff, get involved. involved. So, thanks, thanks for the answers, too. As DL Sniper, Sniper was responding to, I'm trying to find, I thought I could find the question. Uh, but, but anyway, anyway it goes back to one of the things that we were actually talking about in one of the sessions, sessions where oh, that, that was about the cheeseburger that I had before. before the last session, but, uh, yeah, it was about, about the environment variables, variables where I had that whole session where I was fighting with why weren't the environment variables showing up, what was the user environment variables, which really needed to, or I needed to realize the fact that the IDE is not going to pull the user environment variables. The IDE, specifically Golan, pulls its own environment variables that you have to set per the session or the build or instantiation of whatever it's executing. So that's something important to note. And thank you for bringing that back up again. Uh, it's important to know where your user sessions are being loaded and when they're going to be loaded. I also have a blog entry coming about that, which should clarify some of the sometimes oddness in how it appears to load those things. It actually makes sense, but... Unix, Unix, Linux, Mac, Mac OS, uh, freaking Android, whatever, whatever it is. They all load session environment variables in different ways, just a little bit. Uh, so enough about that. Um, I have opened up Goland, and let's, let's try to do some composite code munging to take a look at this stuff. 
and get an idea of how composite code, uh, composite types work in Go. Um, oops, there we go. All right, so one of the first composite types that you have to deal with on a regular basis is, oh, I just didn't show you any of that stuff that I was working on with, ah, shit. I hate transitioning. I need someone to manage the transitions for me while I actually talk. So now you got the screen. So you can see the screen now. And we're going to start with uh, arrays and take a gander at what we can do with arrays. So I'm going to go over to Golan and just start a new project. We're going to go with 1.11. It's not a module. I'll just create this window. And oh, where did I just create that? Oh, I created awesome project. I didn't really want to do that either. Let's let's do that again. Oh, yeah, here we go. So let's name this. We're going to GitHub, Adrian, and we'll call it thrashing code sample two. And we'll put it in this window. All right, fancy, fancy pants. All right, so new file. Make a simple application. We're going to call this one, I'm not even going to call it main because it's just going to be some samples. So I'm going to be running this project instead of building it every single time. All right, so we have main here. And then let's go add a type of build. Let's see, go remote, go build. And I'm going to say uh, run arrays and then in normal fashion i'm going to take this wipe it out and then do this and then pick array.go okay so it's just going to run that one file so that's the same thing as like if i pull up the terminal and type go run array it's going to run the file which right now isn't going to do anything because there's nothing in there Okay, so let's go back over here. Let's start with a basic uh, int type array. Var, um, sum, numbers, and we'll put uh, five in it. It's of type int. So there we go. We've declared an array of three, I mean of five integers. Um, and now it's just, you know, if we looked at any of this stuff, it is empty, but I can pull into it cause it's a fully declared array. Like all the values in there are there to be seen. So if I do print line and some numbers, and then let's say I pull the length of that array minus one, cause it's a zero based array. All arrays in Go are zero-based. Um, and then minus one. So that gives me the full length so I can get the first and the last element of the array and print that out. Right. So right now, if I run that, use a built-in length not in a function call. What did I do? Derp, oh. Hmm. Um, I feel like I... Oh. Oops. If it ain't single quotes, double quotes, parens, braces, or brackets that are screwing me up, I don't know what is. That seems to be my numero uno issue. There we go. So when an array is declared as such, you see that the first and last integers are zero because there's, there's nothing in it. Every single one of those values, if we printed them out, is zero. Okay. So nothing special. Uh, pretty obvious. That's just that's just how they work. Okay. Now, if we were to uh, look at everything in here and print out, we could print out the index and we could print out the value if we did a little for loop, like for i. So in, in, i is uh, for index, v is for value, and we'll do a range of the numbers, okay? Boom. 
And that's going to step through for us. So then we'll do format, print. Um, let's, let's do format. Oops. We'll do a print format. And then, so we're going to print out a number. So it's percent D. Uh, da, da, da. Let's, let's say index. We'll name it so it's easier to read. And then value. Uh, so that'll be percent D also. And then new line. And then we'll give it I and V as such. So now if we run that, we'll get a bunch of zeros, right? Boom. Bunch of zeros. Yep, just like so. So let's make it a little more interesting. Let's actually assign some values to elements of the array. So we'll give zero um, a value of 42. And then we'll do some numbers. Three equals 69. And then some numbers. Uh, we're at four would be the highest value. Because remember, zero based index again. 666. There we go. So now, if we ran it, boom, you can see the numbers in there. Value one and two, of course, are not assigned, so they're still zero. We have 42, 69, and 666. Cool. Now, um, that's really not all. That's only touching the surface of what you can do with arrays in Go. So let's, let's kind of look at some of the other, um, how would I describe it? interesting ways in which to uh, create these things. So let's say we have uh, more number, or night. No, let's call it hmm, oh, some story telling. And we'll say that this is a, an array of five elements that are string, right? Do, do, do. Ah, come on. Damn it, type the right stuff. Here we go. Um, oh, I missed something already. Go away, material theme. I know how it works. Let's do uh, some storytelling. And this, we'll say, this is a great story, and maybe not a great story. Let's actually make this this three items. There we go. And then, nah, it is the best story ever. Boom. All right. And then if we printed these out, actually, let's just do this again. Right, but change that to some storytelling. And then value here, it's not a number, so it's a string. We need to change that for the formatting. And then, yeah, I think that's it. So now if we run it, boom, this is a great story, maybe not a great story, not is the best story ever with index zero, one, and two. So that's a, another way to declare an array and go ahead and assign it values. Kind of comes in handy. And then let's look at, hmm. There's some really crazy stuff that we can do. Like let's, let's take a look at, uh, let's do currency. Currency, int. So that's a type. And then we're gonna declare some constants. Oops. Like this. And do USD. It's going to be of type currency. We're going to start it off at zero there, like so. And then we'll do, what else should we do? We'll do euro. We'll do uh, British pound. Um, what's some other? Let's look up some currencies, huh? Yeah, currency. Let's, let's do symbols. Symbols. So here's the pound sign and the euro dollar sign. So if we go here, we just get a bunch of them, right? Yeah. All right. Cool. The Albanian lick 
the Afghani, uh, Argentinian peso, Barbados dollar, ruble, Belarus ruble. Let's use, let's do that, BYN. There we go. And then we'll go with the Bosnia and Herzegovina convertible marca. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a fun one. Bam. And then let's get something with a crazy symbol. Cambodia real. That sounds pretty cool. So with that, and then Costa Rican, Gibraltar pound, Falkland Islands, Hong Kong dollar is of course the dollar symbol. That's kind of cool. Oh, let's do the Iceland kroner or krona. Um, anyway, that's good for the moment. We'll go back. Now we're going to do symbols an array of them. So if we do dot, 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 that means whatever's to the right is going to be the declare type and the values. Okay. So since I have a constant above that starts at Z iota, um, and it's of type currency as an int, right? So I'm, I have that constants, which are numbered. So if I put those in like, let's say USD, and then we'll put in the symbol and we'll do EUR oops, symbol GBP symbol that one, whatever it was, I forget. <laughs> I think that's the Belarusian currency. Uh, bam. Let's. Ah. Uh, the Krona. And then. Oh, no, this was the Krona, I think. Iceland Krona. Anyway, those are in there. So you can see that this is basically actually the, the index of it. Okay, and then this is going to be the string value that's in the array. All right, so let's go back and let's actually put these suckers in and we'll create a little library to do this stuff with. Krona is this weird, weird symbol. Or actually, I guess it's KR. Oops. So ISK is this one. Let's see. I can do this. And we'll do put this down here. And that's the dollar, which is on my keyboard. And then Euro. Where is Euro? Let's find Euro. There it is the funny C thingy, and then Ben Belarus Ruble, bam, KHR, Cam oh, Cambodian Real, that's what that one is. And while we're here, let's let's find some other crazy thing like this Iran real 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 whatever it is. This is a cool looking symbol. So this would be IRR. There's the symbol. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Oh, uh, did I not? No, it's got a comma. Oh, I didn't get the pound in there. British. England. Oh, come on. What the hell? Where'd my symbols go? Japan, oh, it's the same symbol. Or no, it's not, actually. I need to use the correct one. Pound. 
Egypt pound, Falkland pound, Gibraltar pound, Guernsey pound, Alaman pound, Jersey pound, Lebanon pound. Come on, where the hell? United Kingdom pound. That's it. So A3163. There we go. Um, I don't understand why this is. Come on, keyboard. Oh, because I don't have the constant in here. Derp. So IRR. There we go. And then this one. And this one. So this is actually an array here that's made up of index values based on a constant that's of a specific type. And then if we go here, we do some looping through that again. We can say symbol index. So we'll say currency symbol, right? And then if we run that, look at there. We get a nice little thing where it's indexed. You see the index value and then the symbol for it. Actually, I should just call this the index as such. There we go. All righty. So if we then want a specific one, we can say format. Uh, oops, I don't want to do that either. Format, print. Yeah, we'll do a line. So I'm going to do symbol. And we'll do... Uh, the I, I think, let's see, how is that going to work? Yeah, that gives us a symbol, but we want the index constant. Anyway, well, I'm not going to mess with that at the moment. You get the idea. You can, you can do some pretty interesting things with the arrays. However, let's say I type print lane, and then I say... Uh, symbol 50, right? Oh, it already says it, out of bounds. So that would cause a panic, right? That would, that would blow the thing up. So how do you add to an array? Well, it kind of sort of needs to be not an array, but it needs to use the slice and add to things in that way. So... How do we do a slice? How do we create a slice? Let's look at that. Slices are where things get useful, by the way. So let's say we have something called, um, hmm, what should I have? Oh, well, I guess we could say, this is basically usable as a slice too, the symbols. So let's say we want to add we want to add something to our symbol list here. Um, and uh, let's we'll just create a totally new one. Let me just check in a few things real quick. All right. Let's start a new file for slices. And we'll just keep that. There we go. And then we'll call it what's a list of something that we could do something with? Let's uh oh yeah, we'll go with types of dogs. All right, oh, there we go. A couple of them already. So we have dogs, or dog, let's call it dog breeds. And then we'll assign that. We're going to give it the list, which may be of a set size. We'll do string. And then, all right, we'll start assigning them. So first one is going to be, what do we got here? Bulldog. So famous. 
much much dog wow. Uh, and then we have a German Shepherd. Whoops, German Shepherd. And then we'll add one more here. Labrador Retriever. All right. So those are those are some cool dogs. You know what? This is this is bullshit. This is thrashing code. Let me. It's, uh, uh, Swedish heavy metal bands. Really gonna get my act together here. All right, this is much better. Much better. Swedish metal bands. Entombed. In flames, of course. Hell yeah. Then Opeth. All right, what else we got here? Bathory. Hey, let's let's add that Bathory. Or Bathory, whatever we whatever you want to call it. All right. So now we have this slice of bands, right? So then let's let's just do let's do door nor nah let's do uh black black metal bands. Okay, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. Hmm. Do we wanna do that? Nah, let's not do black metal bands right now. We're just gonna work with Swedish metal bands. And let's here, let's do my favorites. Um and we're going to say it's a slice of these Swedish metal bands. Swedish metal bands. And it is. Uh, we'll go with the, uh, one and two. So one to two. That slice, that range, that's what that is. One to two is what that means. Um, and then we're going to go with your favorites, right? So you can tell me in chat right now what your favorites are. All two of us. Um, we'll just say it's bands, it's Opeth, whoops, Opeth and Bathory, right? So now if we print, let's, let's print out the, the list real quick before we do anything else. So, uh, band, NERP, uh, range. Swedish metal bands. All right, format dot print one band. All right. So if we run this, we should. Oh yeah, I need to create a new. We'll run slices as such, and then change. Oh wait, run array z. And let's create a new one that will run slices. And that's going to change to this. Let's check this real quick. Yeah, I don't need that folder. I don't know. It's kind of weird how that adds that. I always have to check that. Okay, so run slices. Boom. I get a literal, expected literal three or comma. Oh, uh, what did I do? Did I put my oh comma? All right, okay. Let's hold off on doing that for a second. We'll just we'll just print out the whole list of names so we can get a look at that. Boom. All right. Entombed in flames, Opeth and Bathory. Awesome. Um now let's take these two and let's let's actually just look at those real quick. So if we do format dot print line and then do my faves. Actually let's do print F. Let's say my favorites. Do 
That might work. I don't actually know what that'll do. Let's see. Boom. Oh, that's correct. Format dot print f uh, your favorites. There we go. And run that. There we go. So mine says in flames your favorites opeth. Oh, uh, so it, it grabs the first the first one. It doesn't grab the second one. Um. Let's do this actually. We'll do a new line, change this to print line like so. And this is changed to print line. There we go. And then we're actually gonna step through each of these two. This one is my favorites, and this one is your favorites. All right? So look at that. There's my favorites. It just says that one. Oh, do I need to do set offset by one thing? Oh, there we go. Yeah, you got to do. You got to do that one beyond the range because it's inclusive of the items in that. Yeah. So it'll be three and four, two and three, et cetera. You get the idea there. So now we can even do this. Like let's do four, uh, uh, band equals range. My favorites. Then your favorites, actually let's do this. Your fave, my fave. There we go. Thanks for adding that Golan. So it added the curly brace. And then we can say if my fave is equal to your fave. We get format dot print f holy bezel bub we've diverted a war. I like you and I both like whatever it is. And then I can put in the band. So we'll just say my fave. Like so. So there we're going to find similarities in the list. So we'll see who we both like. In this particular case, we diverted a war because we both like Opeth. Yay. Okay. Now, obviously there's not four Swedish metal bands in the whole freaking universe. There's a whole shit ton more. So let's add some more. How do we do that? That is the question, right? So the way you do that is you take the list. What did I call it? Swedish metal bands. Swedish metal bands. And you, up, you use the append function. So there I set in my slice, which is this deal. And then I add whatever it is that I'm going to add. In this particular case, what do I want to add? I want to add a band. So I'm just going to add soil work. And then I'm going to add what's the other one? Oops. Oh yeah, Hammerfall. Woohoo! They were fun live. I watched them like a billion years ago. With death, matter of fact. They opened up for death. Is that who they opened up for? I don't know. Anyway, they were freaking awesome. So if I run that now, whoops, first I'm going to have to pin two must be slice, have four string. What? There's 
Hmm. The append. What am I? I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah, so I'm doing elements. Maybe I can do. I could probably even do this. Hammer fall. Yeah, right. First argument to a pin must be slice. Have Oh, whoops. So my favorites is what I need to be adding to. So this is this is an array, right? This is a slice, i.e. the slice, right? So there we go. So let's let's print that out though. Let's take a look at my favorites. Boom. We diverted a war. That needs new line characters because that's really crappy to read. All right, so now in flames, opeth, soul work, hammerfall. What did I do? I Hmm. Let's put out a break. Let's add a bunch more bands here. Let's go in here and we'll add oh dark tranquility. Yeah. Dark tranquil tranquility. Um oh yeah, hell yeah, I gotta add at the gates. Should I add Metallica? Sorry, that's that's just a joke. Flame soil work. Got them. Evergrey. Oh, of course, a Monomarth. Monomarth. And Evergrey. What else we got here? Candle Mass. Oh, an arch enemy with Angela Gasol. So that's weird. How am I adding this so that it... Oh, that's right. It's just my slice. So I don't have Opeth and Bathory. Cause if, or I don't have Bathory and Entombed. So if I wanted to be... If I wanted to turn this whole thing into a slice, I could do this and say... Um, say... Uh, all Swedish bands all the time. Right? And then we'll make it a slice of Swedish metal bands, like so. But we'll go, we'll do the full thing. We know it starts with four, right? Zero to four. Actually, I wonder if we can do that. No, I don't think so. Zero to four. And we'll add all those bands in there. So now when I run it, whoops, all Swedish, oh yeah. Boom. So it's a slice. I can work with it. I can append to it. And voila. So what? Oh, maybe I do one to four. We diverted a war. Holy Beasel Blood, we diverted a war. You and I both like Opeth. In flames, Opeth. Oh. Still printing out the wrong thing. There we go. All right, now we got the list of everybody. In Flames, Opeth, Bathory, Soil Work, Hammer Fall. Oh, no, we didn't. I think I was right the first time. Told you I was right, Adrian. All right, what do we got now? We got Entombed, In Flames, Opeth, Bathory, Soil Work, Hammer Fall, Dark Tranquility, the whole kit and caboodle. All right, now that, that is an appropriately kick ass slice. So now you get the idea around arrays and slices. Uh, and I'm going to put that up on GitHub. Let's see, how do I do this again? Enable version control integration. I have to enable it. Yeah, Git. So let's call this 
I'm gonna I'm gonna tag this slice using Golan version control. I can go back and reference it later. So enable version control. Use git. Yes, yes. All right. Now we can go to VCS and let's do a. Can we push this up to check out import into version control? Yeah, create Git repository, share project on GitHub. That's what I want to do. Yes, I want to put it up in 002. First commit. Boom, share. Is that it? Is, is it just going to let me do that? Oh, God, I don't want this crap. Huh, looks like it pulled it put it up there. So let's go here. GitHub.com. And uh, this little recent activity. Did it even put it in there? No, it just shows that stuff. But it doesn't show what I just committed. There it is. It's there though. Silly thing. So let's add a readme. First commit um, samples for array for Go composite types with arrays and and slices. There we go. And then. I also want to add a get ignore because I'll add other samples to this in the future probably. I don't want that one. Yes, please add the get ignore dot IDA idea, I mean dot DS store because I'll pull it down on a Mac at some point. And then that's really it for this one because it's not that fancy. And my control K shortcut key, I'll do reformat, rearrange, optimize. Clean up and update copyright. Adding git ignore. All right. And pushing that. Uh, let's rebase it, whatever. Cool. So I pulled down my readme and pushed up my git ignore. All right. So yeah, so I got it all in there. Cool. So let's let's close this project. And with that in mind, let's go take a look at Caligari. Always with the Docker file stuff. You know, I wonder if there's a way to get the Docker file stuff. Um like how how do I get the Docker file scan in GoLand to ignore the vendor directory? Like is that in settings? Uh, that would be a good question for Florin. I'll ping DL Sniper later, and maybe we can get get an answer to that. Because I don't really know. Let's see where is I don't know where that stuff is. Docker, Docker, Docker. Yeah, it's not in there. Eh, whatever. All right, so last time in Culligary. Oops. Um, oh, yeah, so in, in command, we created the schema directory, put the schema file in there, convention-based, like, with a basic skeleton of the schema in JSON. Okay, simple as that. No, nothing fancy at all uh, going on there. So and that was just with the create, right? And if it if it doesn't exist with the create, it creates it. Plain and simple. Um, let's see here. And then we were doing what was it? Set. I think format config path. No, we we're doing. 
Well, damn it, create, and then we were doing a oh, view. Yeah, we wanted to just. I just wanted to view it. So, yeah. So if we do a build, this is general. Yeah, general build. Let's pull up the terminal here. So if we do a build, and then we run. Oops. Oh, it's my go path foobart again. Uh. No, that should be right. But then if I do this, what happens? CD code, uh, source, GitHub, uh, thrashing code, Coligary, go build. And that's going to work, right? <sighs> And this is the same thing, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so there's another question. Like, what is what is that even? I get it. So this builds, this doesn't. What is not loaded? That's screwing up all this stuff. So if I do echo, go root, that's that. And if I do echo, oops, echo, go root. I didn't have it assigned. Let's go just take that out and see what even happens. Go, go root. Well, I can't take it out because it's it's set to that. Go path, go path is set to that, and go path is set to that at the terminal. Oh, well, anyway, okay, we're gonna keep doing it this way then. Because whatever. I know I'm missing something obvious, but I'm not chasing it down at the moment. <clears throat> All right, so if we type in the command, we do config, create, create file, it looked, it found that, it should not have recreated it. So like if we do connection, let's say, blah, de, blah, and save that, and we do create again, it shouldn't overwrite that. So like if I close that and open it again just to make sure, yeah, so blah, de, blah is still there. But if I delete all of this, uh, and then run that again, 70, yep, there it is. Okay, puts it back. All right, that's exactly what we want it to do. But now we want it to, to view it too. So if I do the same thing and then view, there we go, okay. Uh, I believe that is correct. So connection is empty, execute is false, generate count is five, source is console. <clears throat> All right, so now we go over to run. Let's let's take that code. Um, let's call it. Q actions. Oops, actions. There we go. Yes, please add it. It's in command, just like I want it. And then what I'm going to do is actually put. I'm going to put that in there. So because I want to pull it. Actually, let's break this down a little bit more, because we need to start refactoring some of this. So that's that's all in there as a simple, where did I put it? Oh, destinations, yeah, destination. As a destination source, gonna be like a database, distributed database, whatever, like Cassandra. Um, if you follow the Terraform work I'm doing, I'm actually building out the Cassandra cluster, which this stuff will generate too. And I'm gonna do not just this one type, but also Cassandra and Datastax Enterprise, so that we can really start to use some of the extra features that is in Datastax Enterprise, like the graph data store and <clears throat> geo query capabilities and things like that. So it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty rad. But right now we just need to get uh, some stuff printing out to the console. So the, uh, 
the next steps there. All right. So destinations, queue actions. Let's see. So I'm gonna. <clears throat> Uh, I shouldn't call it queue actions. I should say, oh, schema. Let's do schema queue. Whoops. Call it schema queue. Yes, add it. And it's in package here. Yep, okay. This is queue actions. I don't want to do that right now. And then basically the schema queue... What that's going to do is look through the schema directory or the config directory. So let's let's do config config path is where are we where are we pulling that from right now? We should go ahead and put that since I've got it all over the place already. I should put that somewhere in configuration. So let's before I do anything else there, do I still have a good build? Yeah, all right. So I'm going to go into the YAML here, server HQ here. Um, it's kind of irrelevant. Let's do a local operations. We'll call it. That'll be like our local configuration. And we'll say uh, schema path. And we'll just have it be schema like that. Um, and then it'll just, it'll just pull a list of whatever files are in there and queue those up. So let's do a to do, to do, oops, to, to do, get a list of all files in the, uh, schema config directory to do, get a tree, whoops, tree, queue of all the files that need processing. So right now we'll just, we'll pull these things up and print them out is what we'll do. So I'm going to go back over to my configuration thing here and let's create a new type, which is going to be schema configuration struct And we'll do, let's see, what did I call it? Schema path. Let's do a default schema too. And we'll call it schema default. So we know you have a different one there. So schema path, and default schema. Let's actually call this path and we'll call this default. Instead of local operations, let's call this schema. Uh, just schema, that's what we'll call it. Get things a little, a little simplified here. All right, and then back to, like here we, we'll have schema, oops, I mean path and then, Damn it, come on. Path string. And default. So path and default. Let me just get some of this out of here before I make more of a mess. Path and default string. All right. So there's those two things. Um, and this needs to have the schema configuration. Oh, let's call it schema, schema configuration. There we go. Save that. Then, did that fix it? Come on, run it. Ah, oh, it'll line it up eventually. That's what I wanted it to do. So, um, in here, <sighs> I should be able to, I'm going to put my funks now. So get schema list. And 
and that's going to pull the configuration. So like here, um, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. So how did I do that other stuff? Was it in root? I'm looking for my sample for this this configuration stuff. Config file is there. Um, I don't need a toggle. I don't know why that's in there. <clears throat> All right, here we go. So config file, it's pulled, reading config. So I should be able to pull that from wherever, Viper, right? I swear I had that stuff printing out somewhere. Not there, root. We're going to air reading the file and this thing. Oops. Let's just get a get a list of this stuff then. Clear. <laughs> um so there's a viper dot git and key. Okay, and that's the key, yeah. No, damn it. So I swear I did like a configuration of this before. Let's see here. JSON, Viper, Cobra, Golang, configuration. You're reaching with fangs. Yeah, so Viper. Establishing defaults, set defaults, blah, blah, blah. Um, reading config files, set config, add path, add path, error. Yep, and then watching and rereading config files on config change. Oh, I'm not really worried about that at the moment. So let's, let's put it in there, though. That's some good stuff to have, right? So we're going to put this in. There we go. Yeah, cool. Let's see if we still get a good build. I didn't add anything flaky. I'm going to tweak that over. There we go. And then read config from IO reader. Yes. Var, blah, viper.read config. Yes, viper.get. Okay, well, that's, I'm just going to try to do that then. Um, uh, path, go build, and go Gary. Oh, well, I'll have to print it out, derp. It's the stupidest thing I did all day. Now, actually, let's go look at view. And we'll also print it out here. Print line uh, schema details string this print f build Coligary. Let's see what we got. Colligary config view schema details blah 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 something nil <sighs> so single byte be referenced by multiple keys log file log file set Setting overrides. These could be from the command line or from your own application logic. We're going to environment variables. Um, working with flags. Uh, that's not what I want. I want to just get the thing. So this is saying... This would be name. Name would be Steve. Okay, so... I need to go... 
tweak my config file actually then let's just go with this let's actually do that and let's get rid of this config i don't want just completely simplify this and go off the viper thing i don't really need a completely cased object right now we'll just do we'll do this and we'll actually add some stuff to the schema and then schema default like so and that should that should do it right schema path and we'll add another one for viper dot get uh, schema default schema details uh, path and default file oh yeah what did I that we want to find uh, was it config Caligari configuration find it in the whole project there we go ah oh this was in root Oh, so wait, if I did, ah, whatever. I'll re-add that if I really want a nice fancy pants, uh, cased object and everything. Well, so where did it, where did I have it? Unable to decode. Right. I'm not going to have that right now. I just want to do this. So much simpler actually there we go and then we'll do Culligary config view all right schema and default file is schema.json we'll put a little new line in there for now all right cool so that's on view I'm gonna add that to add this to how do I add this to my local thing? Add control A. Oh, okay. So I added that file to the commit. Go ahead and blow that away. Blow this one away. And we're gonna go into create now and refactor this so that it actually pulls in config path is viper dot get oops scheme schema path and then this is viper dot get schema file or whoops default there we go okay and then what is it let's hear look up golang parse file paths yeah I think this is it so you're matched more right no I want to do walk function walk split relation match join joins any number of path elements into a single string adding a separator if necessary <coughs> Oh yeah, that is what I want. So font join returns a string. Okay. Join. So I'm doing file file path. File path dot join. There we go. Let's join. And we're gonna do config. Get rid of that crap. Then schema file. And really, hmm, 
Yeah, I guess that's fine. Cause then I just pull it, load it into local variables for this stuff and then get on with it. So I don't really need that anymore. Um, config path. Yes. Okay. This looks good. So this would be, let's see if I can refactor this to be a method. Um, it'll return a destination object. Build default destination. And then we'll go with Let's set up this in the config too. Um, config YAML. So go with schema. Um, let's go connection. This schema execute. We'll go with uh, five, and this will be. Uh, nothing. Actually, no, it's just, it's going to be an empty, it's going to be that. Heh. Yeah. And then schema, uh, generate count. Oh, that'd be five and that'll be false. And this will be schema source console. There we go. Let's see if we can do this now. So now we'll do viper.get bool and we'll go with schema uh, execute. And this one will be viper.get string. It will be schema connection. Viper.get int uh we'll go with what the hell 64 i know that's it's crazy let's go with 32 and then schema generate count and then default schema file oops i already have source and source needs to be viper dot get string Schema source. All right. Is this saying use Viper 32 as type 64 in assignment? Oh, yeah. Let's go and fix that in destination. Go to declaration. And then we'll change this to int 32. There we go. Well, schema file returns a destination. This, and then we'll do this, this, and default schema. Actually, a yeah, default schema file content equals this thing. Boom. that in there then it can unmarshal that this has config path cannot use this as type string what cannot use config path type interface as type string incompatible types well what type of thing is it supposed to be File path join. Let's 
Oh, did I not match yet? Join examples. Hmm. What? That's some crazy mess. Uh. Type interface as string. Hmm. Well, that, yeah, so ABC, right? Yeah, ABC, da da da. That is what I'm doing, right? Do y'all see that? That is what I'm doing. I do not get what this crap is telling me. So config. Oh, it's an interface. Oh, I do error. I'm gonna do error and then check error. Yeah, right. Get. Oh, I gotta do get string, and this gotta be get string too. That's what it's gotta be. I'll bet. What do you think? That's right. Config path, and then schema file. Yeah. All right. There we go. That was kind of weird and. I even messed it up in the first place. So can't use schema construct generate count as type 64 and in. Didn't I change it? I just changed it. Um, command create view. Oh, create view. What? Can't type 32. Whoa, foobarred all sorts of stuff. So this has to be format. Oh, it has to be an int64. Oh my God. What a bunch of crazy nonsense. Um, what happens if I just do this? No. Print F. And then we'll do bump D. No. Mismatch types. Well, how do you? That's pretty dumb. So go lang print out int 32 as string. Convert int 32 string go lang stack overflow, right? I tell it needs an int format, it needs an int 64. Right. Oh. You write a conversion function. Are you kidding me? Screw it. I'm going back to 64 just because. So there's that. Okay, and then destinations is going to be int 64. Build. Where's the other thing at? It is in create. Going to be git int 64 giant freaking 64 okay clear go build missing return at end of function create go what oh this thing missing a, oh yeah of course obviously return default schema file um let's actually change this to refactor rename default schema contents 
There we go. And boom, yeah, Caligari, config, um, let's create, right? Create, boom, create called 70. There's my directory. Schema default is the name that I gave the default and the config. So this is now created based entirely off of configuration data instead of hard-coded uh, magical strings. So that actually moves us forward some. Um, all right, so next things. So you notice 419 and all that stuff. Let's break out something else here. Let's do, so if it doesn't exist, this, this could be a function of some sort. Result er, right? Print result, return JSON. So that presents, wait, what prints out this thing? I forgot, create called, let's find that. Create called, oh, that comes up here. Okay, so create executes, gets the path and file. Um, then, let's put this in a function. Control M. Let's use the shortcut key. Control, Control M. So, uh, create directory if if non-existent. Or actually, we'll just call it create directory default directory default or no create configuration directory schema schema directory um yeah okay seems like there should be something else to call it but whatever and then this actually i wonder if i can do this boom yeah how's that that's cleaned up pretty decent bit and then we get our json back um and then we we open the file here, then we write we write the file. So that okay. Oh, and open creates it if it doesn't exist. Hmm. Oh, so this is writing. Oh, this could be a function too. So let's roll this out to something. Call it uh, write schema file. Boom, that easy. So and this needs to have path, path and file and anything else. Oh, and then JSON, returned JSON. Um, so let's do this path. Oh yeah, path and file, string, and then returned JSON. It's gonna be, I don't even know what this is. Marshall, it doesn't say what it returns, right? Oh, Marshall, 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 Marshall. Marshall, V interface, turns bytes and an error. Oh, so it's a byte array. So this is bytes, All right? I think, yeah, so let's see if we can get a good build off of that. Here we go, clear. Um, schema default, schema path. All right, so we finished a refactor of, uh, what was that? That was create.go thing. <sighs> All right, that's cool. That looks a lot better. We have these functions now. OK, 
kind of need these. Hmm. Schema file. We need something for schema file functions. Right now they're just in here. I'm going to leave them here for just a second. Um, oh, cool. Thanks, Fritz. Fritz just hosted me on Twitch. What are we going to get into here? We're going to get into... Well, actually, we should create a file for this. So let's go with the Go file. And we'll just call this uh, schema helper for now, for lack of a better term for it. And let's go in here to view. And we'll take some of these. No, wait, it was in. Oh, we're in create. We're going to take some of these things. And we're going to put them in the schema helper. And write schema file, create a default. Yeah, that looks good. You know what? Let's take almost everything here. Write schema file, build the default. We'll take the check deal, all that good stuff. And put that over there in the helper. Because really I'm using check all over the place. And, oops, I think that covers that. Yeah, so. So now we have a schema helper file. So a bunch of not used stuff in here now. Let's see. I'm going to blow that away. And then if we just save it. Yeah, put back all the important ones. So thank you, Golan, for that. Wow, much cleaned up file. It had junk all over the place previously. So let's actually, let's hear the only thing we're using here is path and file and return JSON. So let's see if we can refactor that and what it gives us. Um, into method and let's do build path and file. Yeah. Oh, we'll do return file path join. And config path and schema path, schema file. So get rid of that. I'll go up here. And we'll just put build path and file. Oh, and of course, we need, we're returning a string. There we go. Okay, I'm kind of keeping that here in this one, I think. Should I? Should I not? No, that's going to go out there too because. It'd be one more thing in the helper, really. So create schema directory, write schema file. This is build path and file. All right, progress. All right, I'm sitting down. Yeah. Whew. Okay. <clears throat> That's still ain't right. A little bit more. There we go. All right. Next thing's next. Let's see here. Um, clean up this stuff. So I'll enter. Import for sided six. Optimize imports. That's what I want. And comments there. All right, create is set up. So now let's go back to view, and clean up this nasty sucker. Okay, this doesn't really need to be here, does it? I don't need to really print out all that stuff. Well, let's do it anyway. At least we'll, we'll keep it in here for the time being, but we'll put it into a function print the schema and uh, the details, whatever. Because all that junk's going to go away soon, probably. So in here, we'll pass in the schema 
struct. Why did I even call it a struct? Oh, I'll do refactor rename. Whoops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this. Renaming is not, that's right. Stop trying to rename the underscore. Rename to, let's just call it schema destination. There we go. All right, that kind of gets us that junk out of the way. That rename did not, I goofed it up somehow. I boofed it up. <laughs> All right, now let's see here. So if I'm going into the view, the create basically is set up. So if the default item isn't there, it creates one for us. So it's always just gonna be there to create an item for us, but we want to make it where it can create a new schema and put defaults in it for us. So we'll take, and let's actually look at passing in an argument here. And let's see here, build and path and file. So what we need it to do is schema helper. So when it builds path and fall, it takes the defaults here. But let's see here. Um, I wonder if I can do this like a override func build path and fall string, a return a string. And then here, um, we'll say, path and file, we'll say the file, it's a string, and then the path string. All right now the idea is, if you pass this in, turn, it'll do the join, and we'll be able to basically create uh, we'll be able to pass in arguments and it'll create the file and a default schema for us is the idea. Yeah. So, so let's, let's put, put this, this in here. here. We'll, we'll go, go with, with um, path and file. Uh, yep, yep, that, that should, should be good. good. And I feel, I feel like, like I should do, do some... some... Eh. It's, it's your path. Redeclared, redeclared in this package. package. I guess you, you might, might not be able to do, able to do that, that with a go function. function. So let's, let's just do, do this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that. that. Let's, let's well, I'll, I'll fiddle, fiddle with, with that in a second. second. Let's, let's just, let's let's just get, get, figure out our arguments here. here. So, so on create. Uh, create, create called. called. Yep, yep, that, that is, is true. true. And here, let's, let's look, look at how the arguments pan out, out right? right? So we'll do uh, um, arguments, and then we'll just go args. Let's see what we, we get there. there. I should save it. Save it. Let's go build on arguments. String. Call Gary. Config. And then create arguments. Blank create called. So if I do this, and then let's pass an argument. Let's say the argument is going to be uh, we need to pass in the file in the path. So let's say. Uh, the, we, we want to create, create a schema file with, with the defaults in it, and, and we, we want, want it at, uh, let's say, 
let's, let's say, say file equals uh, new schema.json, like that. that. Boom. So the file equals new schema.json, create called. Don't, don't want this in here anymore. Don't, don't really need it. it. Won't need it. So let's do print f. Actually, let's, let's go look at, let's see here. Cobra, um, was it arguments? Yeah. And then we're going to go how to add a required argument. Yeah. What is this? Oh, that's, yeah. That's not what I want to do. I'm going to do, let's go here. And we'll just search for arguments. Positional and custom arguments. Validation of positional arguments can be specified using the args field of command. Right. The following validators are built in. No args. Command will report an error if there are any positional args. Arbitrary args. The command will accept any args. Only valid args. Ah, that's what I want to do. The command will report an error if there are any positional args that are not in the valid args field. Minimum args, maximum args, the exact args. The command will report an error if there are not exactly in positional args. The command will report an error if the number of args is not between the minimum and maximum number of expected args. So actually, I'll need to do range of args is what I'll need to do. So let's take this validator and then we'll put it in right here. Um, errors. Well, isn't that from, whatever, we'll fiddle with that in a second. My app, this is going to be, what, freaking Coligary? Oh, I'm not doing a valid colors thing, but that's the syntax, I think. So, Greater than one return requires at least. No, I don't. I don't want any of them. So, if uh, args dot. No. I really need to figure out some examples on this sucker. Args cobra minimum args. Oh, that's what it is. Cobra. Yeah. So let's do. Cobra, no args, exact args, arbitrary args, only valid range of args, zero and one. So then if, oh, how should I do the args count? Args, a length of args is greater than zero, then, then I want to do this other thing, thing cobra, cobra um, range args min uh, exact args one, right? <laughs> cobra dot, oh, isn't there another way to do this? Exact args in, oh, I thought that, that would like let you pick the name. Only, only valid args. args. That's command, command arg string. Weird. So, so it, 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 it needs, needs one arg. If, if oh, I, I could do, do if args. Um, let me do this. So this equal to uh, file. Now let's, let's just print. print. Just, just print out the args. So it's missing return at end of function. Uh, what do I do? Return this. No, I don't return that. Do a run args. Well, that's what I wanted to do. Oh, I need to just do this. And boom. 
All, All done. done. So, so now, now arguments args. So let's see if I can do go build and then arguments file new schema JSON. Um, and if I don't do it, what does it say? Arguments nothing. Okay. So we'll just do a thing here. It says if um args. I should, I should split, split that, that somehow. So, so if I had an argument, argument help commands, add, add a command. command. Uh, I don't want to do that. Arguments times to echo the input. Then this one is echoes for echoing anything back. Echo works like a print. Minimum args, Cobra. Strings that join print. Oh, okay. That's how they're expecting you to do that. So if I do that, then create, I get nothing. I need to build it. Go build. Boom. Yeah, print file equals JSON. Hmm. So if I do, let's do format dot print. Dot strings dot split um, string zargs. And this is by space, and then oh, I wonder if I can. Hmm. Well, since it's only going to be one, it's going to be the equal sign, which is the split I want. And then this is going to return some thing. Result. That. Uh, args. Cannot use args type as type string. Why the hell not? I did it string here. Strings join. Oh, args at one. Oh, oh yeah. So, so if if length of yeah, args is greater than one, then do this stuff. So give me a result. That's the argument. It's just to print it out. And then. Print out results. What is this returning though? So I split it. Turns an array of strings. So let's do like we did earlier for uh, result. Um, I'm doing and results range. Where am I typing? There we go. Uh, range result. Oh, yeah, that's here. Um, I don't know. Value uh, format dot print line v. Let's go with index. Oh, yeah, it's basically, basically the same thing I did before. before. And to build it, I just declare not. Oh, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, that's, that's right, right before. before. Let's use the ignore, ignore me thingy. thingy. Build it. And let's see what we get. Did I run it? I don't know what I just did. I did. So, call your file new schema.json arguments. Did we not even get into this? Oh, like args zero. Damn it. There we go. And 
And then this, this is actually going to be index because it's an array. It's a zero based. We're only passing in one, so that should print it out. There, there we go. go. So, so file, new scheme to JSON, new scheme to JSON. File, new scheme to JSON. Okay, actually, let's print this out like this. Just for view of it. Um, uh, and V. And then we just do value. Print F. Index one value this. Oh, yeah, it's a string. So that's what Cobra does with our variable. So it's file new string schema. So it splits it. Wait, so the split does what? That's doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm splitting the string of args at index zero on the equal sign, which based what I passed in means I should have a file and a new schema at, oh, let me, I am building an application that will generate data and and basically export that data to either the console or various different data sources. Right now, I'm working on figuring out Cobra's configuration with Viper. And currently, I'm figuring out how it, it takes in arguments from the command line. So that is that is what I'm currently building. Voluminous mutation. Great name. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Go build. Then config create. That does not right, arguments nothing. And if I pass in the argument, I'm gonna say uh file new schema.json and basically what I'm trying to do right now is set it up so that right now I got a configuration in YAML um, here so I have a default schema path I have a default schema here schema-default.json and this function takes that builds the path and basically puts a schema directory with a schema-default.json file out into that directory if it doesn't exist. So like if I just go in here and, and nuke this, and then I run Calgary config create, I nuke that what? What did I just do? <laughs> no such file or, right. So obviously I did something just recently that now has messed up the thing. Uh, create command, thrashing code, schema, helper, glob. So I had this working a minute ago. So basically, let's take all this. Clear it out for a minute. Go build. Oh yeah, we'll clean it up. Derp. There we go. Go build. So if I pass nothing, it should... Yeah. Schema helper go 44. Schema helper at line 44. Panic, right? So, command 
Add schema helper 25. Check error. So this is, it should be creating the file if it doesn't exist, is what it should do. And now I have created myself a weird issue to debug. So the command, it passes in the command and then it's executing create. Hmm. <sighs> so what did I do? So it's line 25 here. But then Right schema file. Config path. No, that's not 25. This is 25. So 25. File and error. Let's get a little, let's print out some stuff. Print line. And then well, let's just file path, set the whole thing. Path and file. Whoa, why won't you print that out? Uh, something is amiss here for sure. Why are all of these things? It builds, right? Yeah, so it builds. Um, hmm. Schema default, schema path. And this is make, it's just supposed to make the directory. Oh, config path string, right? How does it even build? Build path and file create schema directory. So what did it, so create schema, build file path. Yeah, let's just let's refactor this actually to. Oh, whoops, I just need to rename. Just a rename. There we go. Git path and file. There. So this is the config path. And that gets it out of the schema. On schema file, config path actually should be retrieved here. Whoops. Like so. Doesn't really need passed in. And this doesn't need to be redundant like this. So let's do this and then do this. Yeah, it looks good. I think I could even do this. It makes it a little more readable. At least it keeps it all in there together. All right, and then that is just what it is. Then write schema file is, okay, so path and file doesn't need to be passed out. I need to do git path and file. this path and file equals file boom there we go then that is in there for that
So that works. And then go back over here to create some directory. I don't need to pass that in. This doesn't need to be passed in. I just need to do return JSON. And Culligary config create. Ah, I'm still blowing it up. Check. Number go number 49. Culligary glob function. Hmm. Get path and file. Oh, I wish I had debugging working on here. That'd be groovy. Um, so we're going to do this, see if this works. Format.println. When in doubt, this works. Derp. So go build. And this works. Schema. Schema default JSON. Okay, so that that's getting somewhere. I feel like I'm writing JavaScript now. Ha <laughs> ha. And it's and it's correct, right? Schema and schema default S. So let's hear what this says. This says viper.get string and then schema, oops, schema path. Oops, let's build. Tell them our time. Go format. And let's run it. So this works. Schema is. Big slash schema. Oh, I wonder if dorked it up by doing. I should do that. Let's see what that does for us. Go build. Open schema schema in such a file or directory. Right. It doesn't exist. It's supposed to be created, damn it. Let's see if it's getting in here. Format, print line. Creating folder. So there's the OS stat. If it does not exist, then make the directory. Oh, config path, config path. Shit, that's the problem. Oh, let's actually assign it since it's used in two places. Big path. There we go. That might be the whole bloody problem. Ah. Uh, okay. That's what it was. <clears throat> 70 is this result, I'm assuming. Let's do that. Let's blow that away. Yeah, there we go. Our stuff is back like we expected it. Okay, that's that's what it's supposed to do. That's what I was working on. Um, and I'm trying to get it where I can pass in a file name and have it put the file name in the schema directory. I'm just going to go with the schema directory as the convention. Uh, and whenever you need to new, create a new file, you can just type in the name and blah, blah, blah. It, it lets you, or it prints it out for you. Result declared not used. Schema helper 32. Schema helper line 32. Uh, result. That is correct. So write the thing. Check error. Oh, and what's it? No new variable. 
Well, maybe I can just do this then, actually, right? Yeah, of course. Of course I can just do that. Um, and that looks, I think that's correct. So go build. So I just got rid of a lot of code. Gary config, create, boom. Creating folder. Um, let's go back. Let's get it to say, um, create folder, okay, path and file, create schema directory. Oh yeah, let's do this. Creating folder, uh, didn't find the default folder, so creating schema folder, creating default, default schema, default schema folder, now, folder, it's your S, let's do this, now let's do this, escape, and escape, and pass it, uh, derp, config path yeah so whatever we do with that it's so creating data for now um yeah that should work and that'll be a little bit more informative about what it's doing with the path so let's go change this to a different thing let's not call it schema let's call it data schema schemas there we go so if i run it again build that for that change and then run it didn't find the default folder so creating default schema folder now oh and i need this to be f so if i go over here yep it creates the folder so that looks good you go build do that again, didn't find the folder. If I try to create again, it shouldn't show that because it's already there, cool. So that's what I need schema to do. But now I need, um, I wanna have it where I can pass it a file. So, um, schema, file, new, new schema.json. So if I go here, it says args that, and let's see if I if I add an arg, another arg equal blah between zero and one args received to create flags, um, and if I do help help, I get that same thing. Okay. So the long, this creates a schema, specific schema file with the default elements for the database schema. This creates a schema file with the default elements, which then need to be filled out by the user, by the user. Examples of the schema files are included in the schema samples directory. Um, well, that's, I'll have to add that to the docs put a path in there or something like that. But right here, I want to say to create a new schema, you can also pass in the file name you want the schema called like I can't do that, so let's hear yeah, call a Gary. Call a Gary. Config create file name equals um, new schema dot JSON or even let's make it where it will.
and the file will oops and the file will have the JSON extension appended appended to it. There we go. So then let's build it and let's make sure that the documentation is in there. Um, all right, debug finished, adding argument features. Call Gary, config, create, it's there already. So then create file name equals test. There we go. And we already have it if another one blah equals blah and it nukes. Okay, perfect. So error creates that usage. Yeah, and we'll want to do. There we go. Oh god, that's some crappy looking formatting. Come on, formatting. That looks kind of horrible. So go build. And then I just want to look at the doc again. Come on, is it there? Yeah, okay. Oh, let's do... So maybe that'll look better. Go build, show me the doc. That looks kind of bad too. <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway, that's the that's it for now for that documentation. I'm not writing any more of it for now. Um, okay. So let's go I have the cover range in there to fix that if here we go. If uh, the length, if there's more than zero args, this is greater than zero, then let's work on the premise that we have args that will do this. So we want to we want to get the path and file if there's if we want to set that path and we want to set the file on the path if the thing is in there. So right now, hmm. All right, so anyway, let's let's figure out what our arg is. So format.printline, uh, printf, uh, new line character, new line, and then string. And we'll say args equals z, and format print line, let's just go with arg, wait, strings dot split uh oops args z and then we're going to split it on the equal sign let's see what that gives us then format dot print length let's do this actually let's split it then result equals this and then this is just going to be the result. And this is going to be result zero. Let's see how big this is. Let's length. Maybe this. I don't know. Inspection fill struct introduce local variable. Well, anyway. Build that, and then run the sucker. Okay, nothing's in it, and then I want to do file name equals uh, blah. File name equals blah. That's the whole argument string. Then it's broken apart into file name and blah. So then result zero is bl file name. And that means that would mean that 
the other value is uh, blah, right? Yeah, okay. So then I want to do... Oh, yeah, so if that's that, let's get rid of that one. It's result if uh, result the name of the argument is not equal to uh, file, file name. Then format.println the argument to pass must be of b wait the argument key must be file name with a past in name designated designated for example um cool gary config oh, let's do it this way put this in that's in come on damn it there we go um that config oh Thanks, Goland, for adding a little plus. I didn't need that, though. Mm, fig create file name equals new file name. Or Gulligary config create file name equals new schema dot JSON. So, right. Yeah, hey, actually, let's do that. Let's take off the quotes here. That looks so nasty in code. What we'll to do a strings file? Yeah, we definitely need to do like a strings file to break all this stuff out and put it in places where you can actually manage all the strings in one place, like a translation file. And with a passed in name designated, for example, Coligary config create file name, new file name, or Coligary config create file name. Let's do this new schema. Oh, that's the way it is for now. So if I do this now, let's go build. But if I do names, then for example, okay. Hmm. Okay, I think that'll work. All right, so I'm just going to go with the happy pass scenario now. So we have that. Um, let's put this string refactor uh, extract to a um, set it to a constant. Um, oh, yeah. Message use correct uh, argument. And I'm going to put that in the schema helper. Or no, I'm going to make a, I'm actually going to make a file for that and call it uh, message strings. Yes. And there we go. This is going to be one messy ass file. So if you write Go and you have any ideas how this should work, let me know.
So then this one didn't find it. Let's take that and refactor, extract it to a constant, and then we'll call it um, message did no schema folder creating folder. And we're going to put that over there too, like so. You get the idea. Put all these suckers in one file to get them out of there. Is there any other messages in there? Nope. This, though, it definitely needs to be. Let's go to refactor, constant. Cannot perform refactoring in this context. Oh, derp -a derp. Uh, okay, well, we'll screw with it later then. For right now, though, we need to get moving on this. Get this last little bit done. All right, so we have our file name. So get path and file now needs to do something specific. So we'll go to definition here. Um, all right, so path and file needs to have the, okay, so this, this needs to have the file name passed in string, and then we're going to do with this will actually be the file name, like so, and then if we go back over to create, this will have to be this. And we'll actually say, we'll go up here and schema default. Yeah, okay. So if that, we'll say, use correct statement. Oh, if. This return no wait. So I want to say if it equals to file name, do that. Else I know I had it right. So boom, boom. Okay. And then here so else. And file name is viper dot get string um, schema default. Okay, and I'm gonna actually go with message strings. I'm gonna go with constant. Default file equals schema s schema system default dot json. Okay. If file name, I'll check for that later. But if it's not, then it needs to be set to whatever. And then here, if all this is set up right, we need to file name. So we'll do this file string. I 
name equals the result. Okay. Hmm. So get found path. So theoretically, that should now get the found path. Set this up according to the file name. Oh yeah, and we needed to do if if file name. Oh yeah, how do you do ends with? I don't remember how to do that. Yeah, let's just open the window. Yeah. Go lang ends with string whatever. Yeah, ends with a substring. Strings to upper trim suffix. Trim to upper to do this, split after, split in, replace, repeat, last index, index has prefix, has suffix. That's what I want. Has suffix, s suffix. Okay, cool. So if file name strings dot file name has suffix JSON. Oops, dot JSON if dot dot then file name equals file name plus dot JSON. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that should do it. So let's try this out now. Go build. I want not enough arguments in call to get path and blah blah blah. Let get path and file Viper. Oh wait, derp. Oh yeah, so I just need to do file name now. All right. Yep. And then. Yeah, that's right. Root. Look at that. Go build. No, not enough arguments to call to get path. I'll have one string. Eh? Get path and file. Let's go to definition. It's a string, return string. And so config. Oh, do I need to even, even put that in here? Okay, so that defaults, that creates the directory. Actually, let's put that here let's actually put that in we can check and verify the directory and just run it in all of these view set um, deluge create yeah actually that one's going to want to yeah, so create, set, and view all need it. Okay. Let's just format print line. See what we're getting for file name here. Should always be something with JSON if it doesn't have JSON. 
So go build, and then it says, still don't need a go helper, not enough arguments, and call to get path feel, have, want, string. Um, so if I go back over to schema helper, what, what am I not doing here? Dear, 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 dear. So I'm joining that. Why is that? It doesn't need to be down here on this. Is that what's flaking it out? Maybe. Not enough arguments to call, get path, and file. So I, I pass in the file name as a string, and I return a string of them joined. 20, oh, 23, 23. Ah, yeah, derp. So this is... This actually needs to have, yeah, this, this is where it actually needs to happen. So file name, string, and this is file name. And then in the create here, I need to get rid of this, actually. Go down here and pass that in at file name return json okay we're talking about exponentially better code now um let's see print file name so this is specific to this command but i'm going to put it in a function refactor let's go put it in a method function, not method. So get file name. Here we go. Get file name. Hey, args. Um, args as an array of strings. And then, oh yeah, file, store file name. That'll be up here. Okay, that's that. And then we need to return file name. Don't give me that shit. Oh yeah. String. There we go. Oh, this should be in that top bit here. Boom. So it always ends up being something. And actually we can do this. Use a short declaration. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Create schema directory. Let's just take a look at our result here. Actually, yeah, there we go. Okay. Build. Yeah, right. So, blah. Blah.json. Haha! And we have a blah.json file created. We made progress. Okay. <laughs> that was kind of insane, but. Uh, I digress. Let's start with nothing. Let's see about do this. Didn't find the folder, so created data schedule. All right, schema default.json. Yeah, okay. And then if we go into config, let's just do this and. Um, well, we'll I'll screw with that later. I need to make sure that if there isn't any, it should write that file out. Um, all right, so Caligari, config, create, and schema.json. Why is it? Oh, yeah. Let's take that out. 
Um, there we go. Then, yeah, so go back to the schema helper, write schema file path, and da 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 da. Um, yeah, so create path file. Let's make sure it doesn't, eh, that should be good. So create file name, new schema.json, boom. All right. Let's add data schemas, right? Data, yeah, data schemas. Let's add that to our get ignore file. We're gonna stick to that for now too. So data schemas, vendor and Culligary. And that should appropriately, yeah, shadow that out. All right, oops, clear, get status, get add. Uh, yeah, get add, all of that stuff, commit, added, function out, oops, functionality around create to create schema, schema file, files, git push origin master. That is what branch I'm on, I hope. Yeah, all right, cool. <sighs> Done with create for now. So now with view, let's get samples command. Um, Dream is pass process it for valid existence of directory. So I added that. Um, this stuff doesn't really need to be here. View. This is, I'm in view, right? So we don't really have any arguments. Um, let's actually say args uh, Cobra dot args, exact args range, no args, boom, yeah, so then format view called, if the font path don't exist and empty needs to be created, take the actions, everything, so we can go back to create, and let's say this doesn't exist, right? Debug, boom, create. You can write schema. Get file names. We'll just put in the, the default one. Wait, create schema directory. Oh, uh, yeah. And then all this stuff is junk. Or no, it's not. It mostly is. Haha. <laughs> So this, if it doesn't exist, it should put it there, return the JSON, and then get file name would just be viper.get string of schema default, right? Schema default, yep. There we go, now I've got it right. And then build default destination. Oh yeah, so that gets the content returned. Return JSON, yeah. Maybe change this to refactor, rename, uh, content JSON. And then what we wanna do is open up the path and file with, no we don't, we don't want to do that, even though we do. So path and file, let's 
scheme to help her. Took that out of the path and file. Oh, get path and file. That's what it is. So get path and file and pass in. Oh, let's go back up here and say uh, file name is equal to viper dot get string. Oops, string. Schema default. And then this will be file name. And this will be that file name. Oh, and this is all based on. Oh, no, there's. It's based on if there's nothing there. Hmm. So really what Vue needs to do is take whatever's in the directory and print it out. So let's let's refocus. So if let's do a to do if file and folder don't create issue message to run create first. Um to do if so then get list of files in the default schema directory based on what is in the Gary YAML file then Step through files and determine actions. Determine, oh, number of files, actually, files. To do step through and create a schema queue based on the contents of the files. Oh yeah, right here to do verify that the contents of each file is valid. If not, delete. Um, if not, don't process for the queue for the schema queue to do if, okay, here we go, this should be down here. Then so if, if schema file, right, step through and create a schema queue based on the contents of the, the files. For each file, create a respective action plan based on let's see what is it on whether to execute oh actually I should just make this an if if File schema is ex execute equal true, then add to queue. Else drop from queue. To do um, create action based on source for output a la er, ie so, uh, console cassandra uh, dsc and add postfix oops suffix for number in queue, i.e. which one to process or whatever. 
Um, even though I'm number it, we'll still run go routines and like process multiple of these suckers at one time if need be or if possible, etc. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's see if we can let's let's get some of this done right now. Ah, why is my keyboard not working again? Damn it. Oh, there we go. I just have to use the keyboard in the dialog correctly. All right, so if the file and folder don't create, oh, if it don't exist, exist, let's go back to message strings. We'll go down here, constant, message, view, if, folder um, if not if folder not exist <laughs> whatever um, please run colligary uh, config create to create a default uh, schema file folder and default schema file. All right. Then in view, let's see here. All right. So if um, folder doesn't exist, Issue message format dot print line issue message. Okay. Now let's see here. And create, I say if oh yeah, let's look in the helper. Create schema directory. If doesn't exist, let's just If boom error OS dot stat I said stat damn it stat config oh, yeah, I need to get config path um which is Viper dot get string schema path Yeah. And then OS dot is not exist. Such a weird way to phrase it. Not like I'm one to be talking, but I guess if it doesn't exist, it should print that out. Okay. Right, let's go over here. Oh no, GitHub. I'll add them after I screw with them. All right, go build. Unexpected semicolon. Oh, what? Oh, because I didn't I need the other parens on there. Right? No? What does my helper do again? Clearly missing something. Oh, there is no, no parens, period. Of course, ding dong. Stop putting parens everywhere. Oh, yeah this one and then semicolon okay there we go so it's doing both of those checks so it's looking for it and da, da, da. so okay go build call Gary call Gary Gary 
config. Um, uh, view. Please run Kobagiri config create to create a default schema file folder and default schema file. Yes, I'll do Kobagiri config create. Thanks. So then, all right, so now I can do view, which gives me nothing. Perfect. Okay, so our little message is in there. The file folder that exists, issue message, run create first. And then get list of files in the default schema. So it's the default schema. There's one file. Let's let's get that. Let's see. Um, go and get list of files. Um, that should be super easy, right? Range in files. Read dir. Yep. else actually I could flip that around right oh come remember there we go And now, let's see here, clear, files error, dinner. No, this is gonna be, don't screw me again, mouse. It's gonna be schema path. Oh yeah, let's do, let's do file, do schema path. It's equal to viper .get string of schema path. Schema path. Here we go. Schema. Damn it. Path. There we go. And then so now I'll go build yeah okay so now if I do a let's use the command line and we'll create a new file so we'll say file name equals another schema dot json right and then we'll do one uh, something schema and let's do another one that's just let's say Cassandra one then two then do data stacks enterprise one two oops and let's see graph do graph one all right so now if we do Culligary config view we'll get a bunch there we go. All right. We got a bunch of files listed now. So we have knocked out number two there. Step two files determine number of files. So let's get a count of that. So let's just do a format.println files.length. Does that give you a count? Actually, let's hear it. Come on, damn it. Open the browser. There we go. Golang. Get count of array, whatever. 
run cap six. Wait, how did they do? Oh, print slice. Oh, cap. Okay. But <laughs> that's, uh, whatever. Let's see here. Build. Go build. Eight. Perfect. It's actually eight files, right? So, yep. All right, so we got the number of files. So the schema queue, let's see here. We have, um, we're gonna go with struct. Uh, I don't know, wait, how, how do we do this? Type, yeah, type something, struct, okay. Type. Um, schema Q struct boom. All right, and then just to use this as a reference point to go work from. I yeah, because I'm gonna dump this out to JSON if you know every for every write we we'll have a numerical increase for every write. So the files in the schema convector. Oh yeah, thanks for the to dos schema queue. But let's go with um, let's see your action count, which is int. We'll go with sixty four since that seems to be the thing to do. Um, action count. Oops, count or actions. Let's actually just go with actions. Hmm. No, let's not. Action count is what it needs to be. Action, action count. Maybe I don't even need that yet. I don't know. We'll find out in a second. And then let's go with actions, which will be, let's see your type, actions, struct of itself, uh, schema. And that'll basically define what needs to be done. Uh, da -da. And this will be an array of actions. Whoops. Schema actions. Maybe I should just call it Q. Can I do that? Actually, we'll go with Culligary Q. We'll go with Culligary Actions. Because um, I have a feeling that schema will get overloaded a bit fast. Uh, okay. So in there, we need to have... Um, okay, basically, this is where I need Execute. Actually, let's go with it being a destination, nation, JSON, destination. <laughs> I don't know how that actually works with the parsing just yet. We're marshalling and unmarshalling, but we'll find out. Okay, so that's an array of... We'll just have Culligary, Culligary Action. Whoops. Oh, I could even do... Action. There we go. That, that makes more sense, I think. Oh, God. I don't know what this... This is going to be crazy looking. Um, action. Something like that. Anyway, the... The objects are going to be in memory and everything for now. All right, so view. Found if don't process for each for the schema queue. Um, yes, yeah, so each of these need to.
Let's go down here. Do this. Yeah. All right. Verify that the contents of each file is valid. So I'm not really sure how I'll do that yet because we're not even sure what needs to be in the thing. Um, step through and create a schema queue based on the contents of the files. A queue, schema queue or a queue, a queue item. What are we calling it? We're calling it... What do we end up with? Culligary queue. So let's... Oh, let's rename it. Gary Q. All right. So our call Gary Q. Whoa, okay. So an action, okay. So I think I can do this new Culligary queue. Oh, what the frick am I doing here? Don't need that. There we go. And then, hey, what? Oh yeah, okay. And Culligary queue. Now has all the respective stuff. Actions, action count. Action count is the uh, equals cap files. Hey, what? Oh. Well, the hell. Let's go see what we can do here. Let's just make it int then. Does that make it nicer? Yeah, cool, okay. And then Culligary dot actions equal a pin Culligary Q dot actions. Boom. And that's gonna be a type. So it'll basically be, oh yeah, I need to build. Oh yeah, okay, so this should go up here. And I can say, all right, so I only need to get to count once, so that's done. And then in here, I'm gonna need to pin these items which I think if I, oh, if I do this, let's actually create actions and then, oops, and we'll create Culligary Q dot actions like so. And then in here, I'll actually say actions um, equal append actions. And then here I'll need to do var new action. Uh, yeah, new action. So if so, here's where I need to open that thing. Yeah. So let's see. How do I? open it. So right now I'm out of time. So basically what needs to happen here is I need to open the file. It's here to do open file and unmarshal contents into type action called new action. Step through and create a based on the contents of the file, yeah. If the schema is execute true, then do that. So if new action dot, 
uh, execute. No, what? Um, action destination. Okay, if new action dot destination dot execute if by is equal to oh if if true then do stuff All right we'll say format the print line adding file to queue adding action to Culligary data generation queue like that. Okay. Um, All right, should I do that right now? Um, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and finish this part at least. Yeah, so in create, right? View, create, do I open the file? Oh, I had it. Earlier, oh, here's what I did. Okay, schema destination destination. That's the object that's passed in. Um, oh yeah, okay, so in here, let's see here, how do I do that? So I need to Get the full path. So the full path would be um, schema path, which is config.json. But do I need that? I don't know. I'm going to go with it for now. So viper dot get string uh, schema path. And then Yeah, okay, schema path. Had to change the music real quick. All right. And then the file is f.name. File name, or we'll call it, oops, schema name equals f.name. There we go. Um, all right, so then we want to open it, all right? So let's join those things first, I think. Derp -derp. Hmm. Yeah, so we'll say path and file equals file. Schema helper, file path. There we go, file path. Oh, actually, I could use that function, right? So, returns the string with the file path. Yeah, okay, I'll just use this. I'm being a dummy. So I don't need any of this stuff. We'll just say uh, path and file. Let's get path f dot name. There we go. So this this is the whole bit that we want. Okie dokie. 
Um, keep that there for a second. And now I want to... Um, what is it? File, stuff, file, JSON, error, close OS dot open, uh, get, blah, 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 F dot name, like that. Okay. And then, you can check the error, and then, defer file.json close make sure that memory's freed up appropriately and now let's see here var dot uh, destination is a destination then bits so you till read whoops read all of it from file contents called json and json.unmarshal the bits or the bytes whatever you want to call them um, and then point that at the destination hmm go into the loop what eh, i think that'll work Check error again. Then basically I need to do new action dot destination equals destination. Oh, I should do this. Uh, new new destination. Let's There we go. Okay. okay. And then well, actually, actually, we don't we need to sign that just yet. yet. We, we can, can do. Oh yeah. If new destination, destination dot execute, then do these things. Then do this. So my notes down here. Then that happens. And I tell you about it. Tell the end user about it. Um, so we open a file. The file schema is execute equals true, then add to queue. Okay. Adding action to call Gary data generation queue four. Let's go last. On f.name. Print F. Okay, the action destination. Um, all right, so if that happened, then we actually want to add the new action to the. Am I keeping an array of these things? Um. Okay, this, this is where I want to do, do this, this is where I want to do this. I don't know if that's going to work. A lot of our slice and array activity going on here. Let's build, see what we get. Oh, that looks good. So, Culligary config view. What do we get? We're not getting. So we, so we have, have these files that are in the schema directory. Let's see if we get here, we'll do format.println. Got here. I mean, my silly messages. And then uh, execute. Execute is a go. Format.println. New destination dot execute. Just want to see what it is. Actually, let's 
Let's see, see if, if I can just do this. this. What's that, that going to say? What? Nude, can, can I, I use destination? destination? Interface. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh there, there we go, false. false. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're all false. false. So, so let's go in and, and actually change some of these. these. Let's go, go change, change this one to true. And let's change this one to true. Like so. And enterprise one, enterprise two. Yeah, I want these to be true. All right. And then do we have a uh, console? Yeah, okay. It's true. All right, so that's three of them. Now what do we get? All right, cool. So true, execute as go, adding action to da da da. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's do, let's, let's look, look at, at that, that one. one. And if, if I, I just leave that. that. Adding action, code your data generation for five of them. Out of the, what do we got, eight? Yeah, five out of eight. So let's do var counter int. Um, Counter equals counter. Kind of plus plus. I don't. Uh, no. Okay, plus one. And then format dot print line. Start with this. Actually, we'll do f print line. Ready to process uh, first number out of second number schema um, data generation jobs there we go and then we're going to say cap of where is that cap of yeah, cap of files I mean, and this will be, be so new action, new destination, destination dot. So I want this will be, be. Oh yeah, I want to do new action is added to the destination, then actions is added to that. Oh yeah, so this will be. Cap actions. Oh, yeah, so let's. Dun, 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 dun. Here we go. And then actions will be added to the main object. Colligary. Colligary Q dot actions pinned. Anyway, equal. Actions. I think. Oh, no, wait, I'll do. Oh, yeah, it is. It's here. Actions equal append. Colligary Q dot actions. Uh, dot and then actions. Right? I think. Can I use actions as a type action? Oh, this should be being added here then. New action. So no actions here. It'll be Colligary Q dot actions dot oops. K 
cap. Like, oh yeah. That's it. There we go. All right, the scheme is executed. Added it to the queue. Create action based on source of output. Um, okay, we'll have to, we'll have to fiddle with that later. But I think that might do it. So let's see what we got now. Go build. Actions declared and not used. Yeah, where did I declare actions? Yeah. All right, so go, wait, Kogary view. Oh, I don't need it on every one of them, damn it. <laughs> um, so that should be here. Boom. Eight out of eight generate. That's not how many there are. So here. Flaws is not up here. Action count. Actually, that's, that's not, not a sign, sign there. there. It, it should be, be down, down here, and it should be Colgary Q dot action count equals Colgary Q. It's Colgary Q dot actions cap this. Now, why are actions? Man, Man, my, my files, files are freaking huge. Hmm. So, so what, what is, is the deal, deal here? here? I don't know why I did that. View, so I added one, two, three, four, five, six, but then it says eight out of eight. Why am I getting the wrong count here? Calgary actions dot action count should be what it is. But then, what is this crapping about? Oh, I don't need cap. There we go. But then up here, that's all I need. Just adding to the queue here. Adding counter, counter plus one. I don't really need to be doing that. Unless well that's that's telling. I don't need this. And I don't need that. What I need to do is know why in the hell it's doing eight out of eight jobs. It's not eight out of eight jobs. And where is, let's see here, let's get rid of, let's get rid of that. I don't want to print out the thing every time. Uh, new action. So that's my unmarshalling here. Deferred that, unmarshal. Checks ex execute. If execute, yes, then... Create a new destination out of the unmarshaled object bytes. And then append it to the actions queue. 
It's just var here, right? Var that. Yeah, it should be. Oh, go build. Oh, whoops, let's let's clean this up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, let's actually do this. Let's do this. We'll do new destination. Then we'll print out the details on Culligary dot actions dot was it destination? No, actions. Oh yeah. Uh I need a counter back to do that. Let's do some crazy stuff down here then. Format dot print line. Then format dot print. No, wait, let's do four element in um, destinations. Destination and then. Um, range of Gulligary dot actions. Oops, this where this is probably not just it's just an action, action, then right. So then format dot print line to your destination here on this. All if it just blows up, it blows up. Okay, um, hmm. go build and print me some stuff. So execute one, two, three, four, five. So it should be five out of eight. Why am I? Action count should be five. So you're one, two, three, four, five. So that's the destination dot uh, actions dot destination no dot dot execute no what well that's rather strange and interesting. So Culligary Actions is only five, but so I'm getting Culligary Q action count, which is the cap of that, even though there's only five here. Why is... <sighs> actions dot okay so that's an array of things right an array of whatever Caligari Q action which has a destination in it hmm it has an array of actions in it so Caligari Q actions it's an array of those things Caligari Q Actions. Format dot. Oh, it's so it's the item destination. Well, all right, let's let's play game then. Zero. Um. Dot. Destin. Hmm. 
What does that say? So what does it say? Type redundant expression info. Reports expressions of range clause which are redundant and cannot be deleted. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. We've knocked out a lot today, so I'm going to wrap it up. We've covered a lot of ground. We got create to work, create to work with the pertinent pieces that it needs to step through. Um, taking a look at it here, we've refactored and cleaned up a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, set up the new objects that we need around Culligary Q. Might need to rename that again at some point. Overall, it's been a good day. Good session. And on that note, as always, have a good one.